Caruso, and I am the Farm Beginnings Director at the Land Steward. And I am um, here today to uh, uh, work, talk to you about balance sheets and give an introduction. The Land Stewardship Project has a mission of fostering an ethic uh, for, of stewardship for farmland and for uh, promoting sustainable agriculture and uh, um, developing healthy communities. Uh, we know that we need more farmers to achieve this mission, and that's why we offer Farm Beginnings a training and support effort at, uh, aimed at helping beginning farmers succeed. Um, LSP is just one of 11 organizations around the country that offer Farm Beginnings and are members of the Farm Beginnings Collaborative. The Farm Beginnings Collaborative works to promote Farm Beginnings, um, a successful training and support effort with the goal of increasing the number and success of farmers producing food for local and regional food systems. Over the last year, we've been working with the Farm Service Agency through a um, cooperative agreement um, that gave us an opportunity to help beginning farmers improve their financial management skills and increase their access to credit, with the ultimate goal is to help farmers succeed through accessing opportunities like Farm Service Agency's Beginning Farmer Loan Program. This webinar and the work leading up to it over the last year has, has been funded through this cooperative agreement with USDA's Farm Service Agency. And it's um, been a real great um, partnership. Uh, and I wanted to recognize some of the Farm Service Agency staff who have, we've worked with. In particular, I wanted to um, uh, recognize Julie Kalaji, a farm loan manager out of uh, Farm Service Agency's Mora office in Minnesota. Julie created these exercises, and um, I want to thank her for that contribution. Um, starting about last year, we, Cree Bradley, um, one, one of, a part of our Farm Beginnings Collaborative, and other members of the collaborative worked with Julie to adapt these exercises to use in Farm Beginnings classes and through this webinar. Um, and then today, there's a, I want to give a special thanks to Mallory Krieger from the Land Connection. Who, who created the webinar and will be leading us through these exercises. And so before I turn it over to Mallory, there are just a few important things to note. Um, this webinar is being recorded and will be posted to the Land Connections YouTube channel, website, and will be shared by an email with you later today. Please do not keep your micro or please be sure to keep your microphone muted during the webinar. Questions are encouraged and should be typed in the chat feature. There will be a few breaks throughout the webinar to answer questions, and questions will be moderated by Sarah and read out loud to the group. So I think that covers my introduction. I'm excited to be here and um, sharing this with all of you, and I, uh, I look forward to hearing some of the questions, but I'm going to turn it over to Mallory. Thanks so much, Amy. It's a pleasure to be here, and thank you all for joining us on this webinar. Um, a little bit about myself, I am the Farmer Training Program Manager at The Land Connection, which is a nonprofit based in Champaign that does farmer training events. So I organize and facilitate a number of workshops, webinars, field days, and our Farm Beginnings course that we offer through The Land Connection. Our Farm Beginnings course is a year-long business training program for beginning farmers, and I will share a little bit more about that at the end of the webinar as well. Um, in addition to our farmer training events, the Land Connection hosts the Champaign Farmers Market on Tuesdays um, in downtown Champaign. So we do quite a lot of work with helping create markets for farmers, as well as helping to address food access issues with our double and triple link programs that we offer at the Farmers Market. During this webinar, we will use a resource called Henpecked Farm Balance Sheet Exercise. This will be um, uploaded to our website as well as emailed to you after the webinar. And you also received part of that exercise in emails from me um, to use if you so choose during this webinar. All right, so let's go ahead and dive into our content. So today, we will be covering background on balance sheets, as well as exploring the components of a balance sheet and relevant and important terminology. We will also be 
doing step-by-step -step examples of how to craft a balance sheet, and then followed by an analysis of the balance sheet information. I will also introduce you to some further resources that you may find useful in your um, farm financial journey, as well as um, kind of covering some more information about Farm Beginnings and the Farm Beginning Collaborative. I do ask that if you have questions, please ask them using the chat feature. We've asked that you keep your microphones muted just because that way we get less background noise and the sound is more clear for everybody. And as Amy said, Sarah, my colleague, will be moderating questions and reading them aloud. We will stop periodically through the webinar to go over questions, but please type them as you're going. I want to make sure that um, your questions get answered. So let Sarah know what you need to know. All right, so what is a balance sheet? A balance sheet is one of the big three financial statements. There are three financial statements that every business should be running regularly. The first is an income statement, otherwise known as a profit and loss statement. The income statement takes your expenditures and your revenues and determines whether your business is profitable. Are you making money or losing money? But it says nothing about what percentage of your business you actually own. It doesn't address the outstanding debt and the accumulated assets of your business. It's only money coming in and money going out. The second of the big three financial statements is the cash flow statement. Cash flow statement is when is the money coming in and out of your business. So your income statement is an aggregate document. It covers a long period of time. Your cash flow statement lets you track when your money is coming in and out. It can be on a periodic basis, so it can be weekly, monthly, quarterly, even annually. Most typically, cash flow statements are done on a monthly basis. The third, and the one we're talking about today, is the balance sheet. The balance sheet lets you know what you own, which are called your assets, what you owe, which are called your liabilities, and then what is left, your equity or net worth in your farm business. It is a snapshot of what your business is truly worth. And it should be completed regularly, be it on an annual basis or a quarterly basis. But you should do it on the same day every time. So if you're doing it annually, pick a day that works for you and do your balance sheet on that day every year or at least reflecting the transactions as of that date every year. The reason for that is especially important in farm businesses. In farm businesses, our cash flow and our expenditures are very periodic. We have seasons of heavy activity and seasons of very light activity in our finances. So if you did your balance sheet somewhat arbitrarily, you did one in January and then one in August, they're going to see a very different picture of your business. But if every year you do it on the same day, you're going to get typical trends. And that's what you want. You want a comparable snapshot of your business year on year. So let's take a look at what a balance sheet actually looks like. This is our exercise from Henpecked Farm. And on the left-hand side of the sheet, we have assets. Up here it says farm assets. So everything on the left is assets. Everything on the right are liabilities. And remember, assets are things that you own and liabilities are things that you owe. We also have different subsections within each column. So for both assets and liabilities, we have current, intermediate, and long term. And we'll talk a lot more about these terms. But in general, Current assets or liabilities are anything that is due within one year to be paid or that you could turn into cash within one year. It would have a quick turnaround. Intermediate assets and liabilities are anything that you could turn into cash within a one to ten year period or it has a useful life of one to ten years. And on the liability side is anything that's due in full within 10 years. So say a loan that has a seven-year term would be an intermediate liability. The third category are long-term assets and liabilities. 
those are anything that has a useful life of greater than 10 years or is due in full in greater than 10 years. So an example of a long-term asset would be farmland. So if you're purchasing land, that has a useful life of greater than 10 years. And the loan that you possibly used to buy that would be a long-term liability because you likely would have a greater than 10-year repayment period. And at the very bottom, we have a calculation, total assets minus total liabilities equals net worth. We'll talk a lot more about this, but the net worth is the entire point of the balance sheet. That is what we're building to. It's assessing how much of your business you actually own. So why would you complete a balance sheet? Well, first off, balance sheets provide a trust factor with a lender. If you're seeking financing from a lender and you provide them with a balance sheet, you are demonstrating to that lender that you are a diligent financial person, that you are serious about your finances, and that you have records. A lot of farms, unfortunately, don't keep very good financial records, which can decrease the trust factor that a lender may have with them. The, tr the lender has no way of verifying that they run a sound business. But if you can provide a balance sheet to your lender, you're demonstrating that you can. It also can function as a communication tool between partners, be these business partners or life partners, and can reduce stress. By being able to look at your farm business together on a single sheet of paper and see where you've come from and where you're going, you can refer to that and it can facilitate communication between the two of you. And as I've mentioned, you can see where your farm has been and where it is going. Your balance sheet has a record of where you've been in the sense of what assets have you acquired, what liabilities have you acquired. And it also shows where you're going in the sense that your liabilities will be paid down over time. So it will give you a sense of what your financial picture will be like as the years roll on. And this can offset negative feelings of farm worthwhileness. Sometimes as we are farming, we're working extremely hard, but our net profit can be a little bit low. In the end of the season, you're like, where is all of my cash? Especially in the early years of farming when you don't really have a lot of cash accumulation because you have so many capital expenses. So as you are growing your net worth, as you are buying tractors and tools and implements, those are recorded on the balance sheet and you can see how they are paid down on the balance sheet. And that can give you a completely different picture of the financial status of your business than say just looking at your net profit. You can see, well, I actually have accumulated X number of dollars of equity in my business. This is how much I own. And it can, it can really put a different spin on things. So some tools that you need to be aware of as we go through balance sheet exercise. The first is what you can use to create your balance sheet. You can use Microsoft Excel, number, um, numbers for Mac, uh, Google Sheets, anything, any kind of spreadsheet software can be used for creating a balance sheet. And there are many templates that are available online. The one that I have here is from SCORE, which is a wonderful website for anything business related. I have links here and you will be, you'll receive a PDF copy of this PowerPoint as our, in our follow-up email in addition to the video recording. And so you'll be able to click on these links, or you can write them down now. But um, the score balance sheet, which you can see here, is the one that I have in the photo here. And then here's another template if you prefer a different layout. There are many different layouts for balance sheets, and the layouts are arbitrary. The components are all the same, assets, liabilities, and the term in which they're due. Lastly, you can also use financial accounting software to calculate balance sheets. QuickBooks is an excellent one, but all financial accounting softwares will calculate balance sheet 
uh, will produce balance sheets automatically. So as long as you're keeping your records up to date in your financial accounting software, um, you will be able to just click a button and voila, you have a prefab balance sheet. So these are very useful. They save a lot of time. The last way that you can create a balance sheet is with good old pen and paper. It, it, there are no requirements, but it has to be laid out with a spreadsheet document. So writing your numbers down and calculating your assets minus your liabilities and your net worth, you've got a balance sheet. But the most important thing, you have to have good records to even calculate a balance sheet and for a balance sheet to be useful. So as long as you are keeping good records for your farm, creating a balance sheet is a very attainable task. So what does a balance sheet tell us? The entire purpose of a balance sheet is to calculate the owner's equity, which is also called net worth. That is how much of your business you actually own. So if you have no loans, but you do have some outstanding um, bills that you need to pay, you're likely going to have a high percentage of equity. But if you have a lot of loans, you might have a lower percentage of equity. Now, if you have a positive equity, which means greater than 0%, your business is technically solvent. If you were to sell all of your assets right now in this very moment, you could pay all of your debts. And that means your business is solvent. That is the base goal of running a business. But if you have negative equity, equity, that means that your business is insolvent. That means that you cannot pay all of your bills if you sold all of your assets. And that is a very dangerous position to be in as a business owner. The last thing that the balance sheet will tell you is if you have enough working capital to avoid cash flow problems. It's not going to tell you when those cash flow problems might happen. That's where the cash flow statement comes in. But it will tell you if you have enough assets that you can liquidate in the event that you have to send out more cash than you currently have. Now, some examples of capital that you could liquidate would be stored grain in a grain bin or some of your broiler chickens. You could try to find a buyer more quickly than you intended. Or if you have unneeded equipment that you could sell. All of those are types of capital that can be liquidated to avoid a cash flow problem that won't show up on your cash flow statement, but will show up on your balance sheet. Before we dive into the nitty gritty of the balance sheet, I would like to review some of the terms that we have introduced. The first is assets. Assets are anything that you own or lease, anything that could be turned into money. Liabilities are anything that you owe to another person or business. Your equity is the excess assets over liabilities. So if you take the total value of your assets, you subtract the total value of your liabilities, that's your equity. That's how much you own of the business. That's how much you would have left over if you were to close and liquidate the business. Current assets and liabilities are due in less than one year or can be sold in less than one year. Intermediate assets are one to 10 year life and long-term assets are greater than 10 years. This is a perfect opportunity to stop for some questions. Are there any questions uh, before we move on into the balance sheet exercise? Hi everyone, this is Sarah. Um, so far, we've got one question uh, about whether or not the um, participants can get a copy of the example balance sheet as an Excel spreadsheet. Yes, I will send that out after the webinar um, with the summary email that will include the video recording. Yes. Okay. Any further questions there? I don't have any here, but as you guys are uh, listening, if you think of anything, just type it in the chat box and we'll um, get them answered in the next pause. Great. Thank you so much. All right. So, balance sheet. Effectively, creating a balance sheet is like playing a sorting game. You take an inventory of all of your assets and liabilities, anything that has money attached to it, 
and you sort it into various subcategories. So we have the farm and personal, then you can go assets and liabilities, and from there you sort it into current, intermediate, and long term. Diving in, this is the overview of the steps to create a balance sheet. Once I have told you about the overview, we're going to go through each step in our example. So the first thing you need to do to create a balance sheet is to craft a financial inventory. The financial inventory is essentially just a list of all of the items that you have on your farm that you could turn into money or that you have paid money for. Then you categorize those into assets and liabilities. Oh, I'm sorry. Then you need to assess the value of all of those assets and liabilities. You have to put a dollar amount next to each one of those. Then you sort them into farm and personal. And I do recommend that when you're creating your fin financial inventory, you don't just create an inventory of your farm, but you create an inventory of everything you personally own and owe. So you're going to sort those into farm and personal buckets. Then you're going to sort those buckets into assets and liabilities. Then again, into current, intermediate, and long-term categories. Then you will sub create subcategories. And we'll talk about those in a little while. You'll run your calculations, and then you do your financial analysis of what your balance sheet is telling you for your particular business. So the example we're using today is from Henpecked Farm. Henpecked Farm is a fictional farm, but to get a little more personal, I decided I was going to come up with a little bit of a backstory for Henpecked Farm. So we're going to call the farmers Bob and Jean Henderson. They farm 48, or sorry, 46 acres, and they raise cattle, corn, and hay. So let's go through the journey of creating a balance sheet with Bob and Jean Henderson. The first thing that Bob and Jean need to do is create a financial inventory. So they have to think of all of the things that money is attached to. Either they paid money for it, they could get money for it, or they owe money on it. So these could be things like your livestock, fertilizer, land, supplies that you have in inventory, your car, your shed, any unpaid bills that you owe or bills that or in, invoices that you have sent out to um, purchasers of your goods, um, your credit card, retirement accounts, anything and everything that has money related to it. So Bob and Jean did this for their farm, and this is what their financial inventory looks like. Over on the left, we see they have some laying hens, and they made a little note here for friends and family use. That will be important as we go forward. Things like farm cash, they've got steers to sell, they have an operating loan that remains to be paid from 2015. There's machinery and equipment, a bill that is owed to them from the neighbor. They provide the services for, for fixing their tractor. So we see this is a very comprehensive list. They even include that they have a recreational boat. That's important. So let's assess the value of all of the assets and liabilities for Bob and Jean. There's two ways to assess the value of all assets and liabilities. The first is using a cost basis. A cost basis is the original cost of the asset minus accumulated depreciation. Depreciation is a, a tax word that means it, an even incremental decrease in the value of an asset over a defined period of time. So, for example, if Bob and Jean bought a tractor for $5,000 and they decided to depreciate it over eight years, they would depreciate it by $500 a year. There are schedules for depreciation published by the IRS that you can use for taxes. And I recommend if you're doing the cost basis, you do it for your balance sheet using the same depreciation schedule that you do for your taxes. So, if this tractor was depreciated um, over that period of time, um, they've had it for four years. So therefore, it would be a $1,000 value now. So this tractor using the cost basis would be a $1,000 value currently, even though they bought it 
for $5,000. The cost basis is used to analyze the financial performance of a business, and that's really the only purpose of it. The second way that you can assess the value of your assets is using the current market value. The current market value of any asset is what you could sell it for for cash today. So what someone would actually pay for it if you sold it today. Now there are some assets that decrease in value very quickly. Your personal car, if you bought a brand new one today, you may pay $23,000 for it. And if you sold it in one year, it may only be worth $17,000. But there are other assets that decrease in value very slowly on the fair market. Tractors are one of them. So let's say five years ago, you bought a tractor for $5,000. If you took good care of it, you very well may be able to still sell it for $5,000 and get all of your money back. So the current market value would be essentially the same as your purchase price. So in this example, the tractor, if it was assessed at fair market value, current market value would be $5,000. The current market value way of assessing the value of assets and liabilities is used primarily for farm planning and for loan applications. And most of the time, if you're going to be presenting a balance sheet to anyone, it's because you're trying to get a loan. Therefore, I recommend that you use the current market value. But the most important thing is that you pick one that works well for you and you're consistent with it. Every time you run your balance sheet, you use the same way of assessing the value of your assets and liabilities. So let's look at Henpecked Farms asset value table. We can see here that Bob and Jean have gone through and determined that their dozen laying ch uh, chickens could be sold for $120 total. They have $1,000 in their farm cash account, they have personal checking, $400, personal savings, $1,000. As we look through the, this list, it's pretty evident that some assets and liabilities are very easy to assess the value of. Your personal savings account, you go to your online banking system, what's your current balance, that's how much you have. The corn in the bin is another one that's fairly easy. Estimate your number of bushels, what is the current market price of corn, multiply and you have your total value for the corn in the bin. But others are a little bit harder, like a cattle trailer. It's sometimes difficult to assess what a current market value of a cattle trailer may be. There are online trading websites, there are classified systems. I recommend that when you're trying to assess the value of that type of asset, look around, see what similar assets are trading for, and then that's what you should use for your asset. Something that I want to point out though is anything that is a loan, you'll see two different numbers. We have the total outstanding balance, but we also have what their annual payments are and the term of the loan. The same thing exists down here for the real estate mortgage. The outstanding balance is $140,000. They pay $1,000 a month, or $12,000 a year in total. Now the reason that we do that is because those amounts need to be reported differently on the balance sheet and we will get to that in a little bit, a little bit more depth in just a moment. Before we do, are there any questions on assessing the value of assets and liabilities? Now's your chance. Uh, anything, type into the chat box if you've got any questions for us to pass on. We don't have any at this time. Okay. All right. In that case, I'll go ahead and move on. We will stop for questions shortly, so if there are any that we miss at this time, we can pick them up then. Uh, one question just came through. Why is it best to, why is it best to combine business and asset, oh, business and personal, I see, okay. The reason is because later on, we're going to calculate um, a type of balance sheet called a um, combined balance sheet. 
we want to run the numbers for the business and the personal separately, but we want to have the information on the personal so that you can see what your personal total net worth is. Because that will also inform how you can grow your business. Because you are your business's biz biggest investor. And you want to assess your own personal financial health to know whether you're able to give your business what it needs to be able to grow. Or to take a look at your personal financial health and decide on the, on the flip side that your business is taking more than what you can give and that you need to make some business decisions based on that. But without running the personal um, assets along with the business assets and liabilities, you wouldn't be able to have a complete picture of your, your personal financial standing. All right, so we are now into the sorting game. We've created the financial inventory and we have um, assessed the value of all of the assets and liabilities. So now we need to sort them into our first two buckets, which is farm and personal assets and liabilities. We can see here that the Hendersons have their personal assets in yellow and their farm assets in black. It's very easy in most cases to decide whether an asset is farm or personal. In the Henderson's case, the only one that could be um, up for question is their laying hens. But in their case, they don't sell the products of their hens. They don't sell the eggs as part of their farm business. They use them personally, and they provide them to friends as, as gifts and maybe a small monetary exchange. But they're not operating the chickens as an enterprise as part of their farm. In some cases, it may be hard to decide whether some machinery or equipment is personal or farm. Um, some people choose to operate their farm as a separate business and that they own some of these assets outside of the business for liability management reasons. In those cases, you just have to make the decision who paid for it. Did it come out of the farm's business account? Or did you personally pay for it? And that's how you decide whether it's a personal asset or a farm asset. Next, we sort the assets, or, or, so sort the list into assets and liabilities. So of the farm subset, we decide what is something that we own, those are the assets. What is something that we owe, those are the liabilities. So there's a bill to the feed store mortgage on the liability side, but we have the farm real estate value on the asset side. So for some assets and liabilities, you're going to have an entry on both sides, and that's okay. If you own an asset, put its fair market value on it, and if you have debt on that asset, you also include the debt for that asset. Then we do the same thing for the personal assets. So we have the car and the boat and the cash money on the asset side, and then we have the credit card bill and the car loan on the liability side. Next, we're going to sort the assets and liabilities into current, intermediate, and long-term categories. Recall that current is less than one year in duration, intermediate is one to 10 years, long-term is greater than 10 years. So let's look at our inventory and how it's sorted now. We've got assets on the left, liabilities on the right, and now we have our six subsets. The current on the asset, current on liabilities, intermediate on both sides, long term on both sides. And the way these were determined was, can you turn it into cash within one year? The steers to sell very well could be turned into cash within one year. The vet supplies, you could sell them at a, at a garage sale or on Craigslist. Then we have on the intermediate side, machinery and equipment. Your machinery and your equipment most likely has a usable life of greater than one year, so it will go in the intermediate category. The yearling heifers, you're going to feed them out. They are not going to be sold for in greater than one year. So those should go in the intermediate asset. Also, bred cows. You plan to keep those bred cows for more than one year, so they are an intermediate asset. Additionally, the bull. 
they, the bull will be kept and used for more than one year, so he stays in the intermediate. The only long-term asset associated with Henpecked Farm is the real estate. And so the real estate has a useful life of greater than one, greater than 10 years, so it goes in the long-term category. Now for the liabilities, we assess the liabilities as when is the bill due in full. But I may note that we have to treat loans in a special way. The farm real estate mortgage is listed in both the current and the long-term categories. And the implement payment is in both the intermediate and the current category. The question is, why? Well, a portion of that mortgage is due in less than one year. But the balance is due over a much longer period of time. So for loans, Calculate how much of your loan you will pay in one year and put that portion of the loan in the current category. Then subtract that from the total amount due and put the remainder in the respective intermediate or long-term category. Now if you have a loan that is due in full in less than one year, like the operating loan, the entirety of that loan will go in the current category. So to repeat, so we make sure that we understand, the loans that are due in less than one year, the entire loan goes in the current category. But for loans that are due in a longer than one year term, you put the portion of the balance due that you would pay in one year in the current, and then the remaining amount in the respective long-term or intermediate categories. Now, do the same for the uh, personal categories. So we take the personal assets, we split them up into current, intermediate, and long term. For this particular farm, they have a handful of current assets. Any cash, savings, checking accounts, those are always current. And then in the intermediate, they have a car and a boat. On the liability side, they have a small credit card balance, so that is due monthly, so that needs to be put in the current category. And then they have a loan to their car, and that needs to go in the intermediate category. This is a perfect opportunity for questions, and I saw that we do have some coming in. So Sarah, could you let us know what our listeners are desiring to learn? Yes, so the first question um, is about, uh, so if you have a tractor and O on a loan for it, would it appear in both assets as the tractor value and liabilities, the loan? Yes, so if you have an asset that you have a loan on, you put the value of the asset, the total value of the asset, the purchase price, or the current market value in the assets category, and then you put the loan amount in the liabilities category. All right, um, next question is, why is farm real estate only in current and long term? What about the amount that is due in the intermediate term? So the, the amount that's due in the intermediate term is um, not used when you're dealing with a long term asset. Uh, just by accounting convention, you categorize the remaining amount due by the end date of the loan. But when you do your balance sheet for the next year, again, you will take out the current portion, but leave the rest in the long term. But say you're only five years away from paying off your real estate mortgage, it would now be considered an intermediate asset because it's due within five years. And the purpose is so that you just get an idea of your long-term trajectory, how long it's going to take to pay down these assets as you're looking at your balance sheet summary. Are there any other questions? Yes, we've got two more. Um, do you update the intermediate and long-term values every year according to a present value calculation? 
I assume we're talking about assets here. And the answer would be yes. Every year that you run your balance sheet, you need to look at what your current or present value of each asset is. So a good example would be if you had a farm truck, you would have your, your normal decline in value, but say there was an accident and that truck um, was damaged, but it was still usable. That would be an instance where you would need to decrease it by a little bit more. So every year you reevaluate the value of your assets using the current market value basis. And the same thing for your liabilities. As you pay down your liabilities, you're going to change those numbers. Uh, what was the last question? So this last one we have here, um, if, uh, let's see, if your farm is your home, would that be a business or personal asset slash liability? I would say that it could be both. And in that case, I would, um, if you had an appraisal on file or if you looked at your property taxes and it breaks it out by homestead value and farm building and land value, I would then split the value of that asset between personal and farm. Uh, that way you're getting a, a better picture. Um, if for some reason you had a mortgage on that property and you were paying it all out of personal funds, I would keep then the land and the farm buildings in the personal category because you're not using your farm funds to pay that down. All right, any final questions before we move on? Yeah, I think there was one request for a clarification um, on the previous question. So that was the question about updating the um, intermediate and long-term values every year according to a present value calculation. And so um, they've asked, uh, they're wondering about the monetary present value um, for, or in other words, um, the, the dollar value, the present value, all other things being equal. I'm not sure I am understanding, so let me look through the chat really quick so I want to make sure that we answer that correctly. Um, I, I, I'm not sure how I can clarify for that um, person. I'm, I'm not completely understanding the question. So um, this may be a good opportunity after the webinar. Um, I'd be very happy to email or call with this person. So you can call the Land Connections line at 217-840-2128. And I'd be very happy to answer your question. It's difficult sometimes in the chat setting to, to understand the nuances of a question. So I'm happy to talk to you afterward. Okay, so now we're going to dive into plugging in our numbers into our subcategories. So we've done the bulk of the work of doing a balance sheet, which is creating our inventory and then categorizing each of the assets into each of the items into assets and liabilities, and then their subcategories, current, intermediate, and long term. The next reclassification that we do is within each of those six main categories we can categorize certain items into aggregate subcategories for comparison purposes. It's at this point that you can do it however works best for you. Whatever makes the most sense for the way that you run your books and the way that you run your farm, call the categories that. So a lot of times you can combine cash checking and savings accounts into cash or into bank accounts. Uh, supplies on hand, we have just one category for that here, but if you have major supply categories that you want to track differently, like say you have supplies for your vegetables and supplies for your bees, then you can break those out into two separate categories. At this point, it just is whatever makes the most sense for you. So on this balance sheet, we've taken all of the current assets, and added them up. So there were three assets for the farm that would go into this category. We had the cash, the savings, and the checking. So we add those three amounts up and put that sum in this cell. And then we have prepaid expenses, add that in there, 
the loans we had already broken up, so we just make sure that they go in their respective current liabilities, intermediate, and long-term categories. And then for our farm side, we need to do our calculations. And this is just adding things up. Very, very easy math on the balance sheet. Nothing too complicated. It's, it's just straight adding. So you add up each of your six subcategories. So your current farm assets, add them up. Intermediate farm assets, add those up all the way down. And then on the asset column, you want to have a total sum of your farm assets. So there you're adding the sum of the current, intermediate, and long-term assets to come up with the total farm assets. In a lot of the template spreadsheets that people use for creating balance sheets, these forms will be already set with the formulas, so you're done at the point of inputting your numbers into each of the categories. The sums can automatically be calculated. And we do the same thing on the liability side. Add up all of your current liabilities, add up all your intermediate, add up all your long-term, and then each of those categories to get your total farm liabilities. Then we're going to do the same thing for the personal. So we plug in um, into the subcategories for the personal assets and then calculate. And again, we get the total personal assets down here and the total personal liabilities down here. Before I move on to the analysis step, let's discuss those three balance sheet types that we alluded to earlier. The first is your farm balance sheet. So we've been doing these as two separate buckets, farm and personal. The farm is all of your business, and your personal is everything that is outside of your business that falls into your personal finances. And then what we're going to do at the very end is combine them into a consolidated balance sheet so that we can see the entire financial picture of you individually. So let's analyze the farm. We calculated the total assets and the total liabilities. And now we need to run it into the formula. Assets minus liabilities equals owner's equity, or net worth. So these numbers are pulled from the farm balance sheet. At the bottom of the asset column, we came up with $338,100 in asset value. And at the bottom of the liability column, we came up with $163,250 in asset value, or in liability value. When we subtract the liabilities from the assets, we have an equity of $174,850. So let's take a look at our balance sheet just to reflect on where those numbers came from. The total assets was from here. The total liabilities was from here. And if we look back here, we have an equity of $174,850. What that means is that if Bob and Jean Henderson were to sell their farm, if they were to liquidate and, and get out of farming, they would be able to pay off all of their liabilities, meaning all of their debts, and they would still have a pretty ample surplus. They have a greater than 50% um, equity, which means they're in a very good financial position. And I did just see a chat come through um, that there is a difference in the numbers, and I think I noticed it too. Um, is it the 338 instead of 335? Let's take a look. Hmm. Oh, I see what I did. I forgot to add in the other two. I pulled the wrong number when I made that slide. So thank you for catching that error. When I was creating the slide, I pulled the numbers from only the intermediate category and not from the correct place. The numbers should have been pulled from the bottom here. So thank you for catching that error. I'm glad that you mentioned it so that we avoid confusion. I'll correct that in the slides that I send out. But the, the um, calculation uh, process is nonetheless correct, and they are still in a very good financial position. So let's take a look at their personal situation. 
So we pull the total assets, which is $17,420, and total liabilities, $8,050. And we have the owner's equity of $9,370. So Bob and Jean Henderson's personal finances are in good shape, though they don't have significantly high net worth. They do have a good percentage of equity. They are still at over 50% equity, which means if they had to pay all of their liabilities in short order, they would be able to sell assets and to do that. So we can see here that personal asset number is pulled from the bottom of the asset column, and the personal liability number is pulled from the bottom of the liability column. And now we analyze the whole picture. This is the consolidated balance sheet. And what we do is we take the total assets that are owned by the farm and Bob and Jean's personal assets total and add them together. And we get their total asset value for the consolidated sheet. We do the same thing for the liabilities. We take their total liability amount for the farm, their total liability amount for their personal assets, and we get their total liability amount. Then we do the subtraction, assets minus liabilities equals owner's equity, and we see that in their consolidated balance sheet, they are in a very good position. And as we referenced before, one of the reasons to do the consolidated balance sheet is to see what your personal total financial health is. Your farm may be doing excellently in terms of your equity percentage, but if you have a very high amount of liabilities in your personal life and not many assets in your personal life, your total equity in your own financial picture would be very much affected by that. And so it's important to do the consolidated balance sheet at the end of your analysis so that you can determine how are you doing in totality. Are there any questions about the calculation and the analysis? portion of the balance sheets. We don't have anything entered right now. Okay. One thing that I would like to um, take a look at, I'm going to go back just a little bit to the farm. Um, one thing I wanted to point out is how the balance sheet can help you assess your, your cash flow um, position. And we mentioned that at the very beginning of the webinar that one of the benefits of a balance sheet is that you can use it to determine how you're doing for potential cash flow. And that analysis happens here in the current liabilities and assets section. We can see that the current for the farm is at 38,300 and that on the current liabilities on the farm is at 31,250. Current means that it's due or can be turned into cash in less than one year. That's your cash flow. That's where you see, do you have enough assets that you could quickly convert to cash to pay off the liabilities that would be due in that same period of time? In this case, for the farm, they do. But let's see what happens if we look at their personal. At the personal level, they have $500 of current assets but they have $550 of current liabilities. That does not mean that they can't pay their bills because they may have more assets coming in. It just means that they should look at it very carefully. That is a flag that says, I need to watch my cash. I need to do my cash flow analysis. I need to see when I'm expecting more assets to be acquired, either by the sale of, of some um, personal goods or through working elsewhere and bringing home a paycheck. Remember, this is a snapshot in time, so tomorrow's paycheck is not going to be reflected on today's balance sheet. It's an ever-changing document. It's a snapshot that lets you see the overall health without having to um, do too deep or too complicated of analysis like a cash flow statement would be. Okay, did any questions come in while we were talking there? No, nope, looks like we're still on track. All right, well, congratulations. 
you have just completed your first balance sheet, and you are now prepared to complete one for your own farm. So some next steps. Before this webinar, I sent out an email to everybody with a link to an evaluation. The link is also here. Um, please complete this evaluation before you leave your computer. It's using Google Forms. It's very quick and easy. Um, these evaluations are very important for the work that we do at the Land Connection and at the Land Stewardship Project uh, because they help us make our programming better and to grow and also to see what your needs are so that we can help meet them. They also help us with um, reporting on our funding because this is a grant funded project. We need to let our grantors know how we're doing and you're how we let them know. So please take a few minutes and complete the evaluation before you leave. I also would like to point you to um, the URL where I will be uploading all of this information. You will be getting an email since you registered for this event, but please share this URL with people in your friends and family lists for this information. We want to make sure that it gets out as far as it possibly can. Also, I want to point you in the direction of some other resources. So now that you know how to do a balance sheet, you're in a really great position for being able to seek funding. And that may be the reason that some of you decided to take this webinar. Uh, this webinar is part of an FSA grant, and the Land Connection did some work with FSA earlier this year on creating a guide for specialty crop farmers and beginning farmers of FSA programs. So you can go to thelandconnection.org slash webform slash FSA dash guide dash download dash page, and you can download a free version of this guide. Also, ATRA is an excellent organization that has many financial lessons and resources. So as you are going through your financial journey, take a look at ATRA's pages. They have excellent comprehensive guides on their webpage. Also, another excellent financial resource is Fearless Farm Finances. It is a free book from Moses. I highly recommend that you take a look at that um, document. And lastly, I would like to draw your attention. Oh, I'm sorry, Amy. Thank you for letting me know. I got it confused with a book from Sarah. Um, Amy, just let me know. The uh, Fearless Farm Finances is not free. Thank you for letting me know. Uh, the books from Sarah are free, but not from Moses. Um, so the last thing I want to draw your attention to is the Farm Beginnings Collaborative. Many of you live in areas where the Farm Beginnings Collaborative has members. The Land Stewardship Project and the Land Connection are both members. We run the Farm Beginnings year-long training course where we teach beginning and intermediate farmers how to write a business plan and do deep analysis of their financial books. If you would like more information about that program or collaborative members who also do programming like this that's not part of Farm Beginnings, uh, go to the webpage farmbeginningscollaborative.org and it lists all of the organizations that are members and it lists their URLs and you can, you can check out their websites. In the meantime, if you have any follow-up questions or you would like to learn more about the programming that the Land Connection and the Land Stewardship Project put on, I have listed the contact information um, from both, for both uh, Amy and myself. And I also wanted to let you know that for anybody who might be listening in from Ohio, we have a brand new Farm Beginnings Collaborative member, OEFFA. Um, and they are not listed on the Farm Beginnings uh, website yet because they are brand new. But Ohio, you have Farm Beginnings representation. So awesome. All right. Any questions before we uh, close the presentation? All right. Well, I will take that as we are all good. So thank you all so much for joining us today. It's been a real pleasure to teach you about balance sheets, and I wish you all well in the financial journeys you have with your farms. And please, don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, we're Amy and I are both accessible, and we are really excited to be doing this work. So thank you, and thank you so much, Amy, for providing us with the opportunity to run this webinar. So thank you, everybody, and have a wonderful afternoon.